is it? It's going to be the truth about having ears to hear. The truth about having ears to hear. Folks, Jesus went about many times after he would do a sermon, after he would do some teaching, he would say something like this, those with ears, let them hear. Now, I used to say to my pastor, it sounds like nobody had any ears back then. And he smiled at me very patiently and he says, nobody paid attention back then. And only the ones, listen, my pastor said, only the ones that listen went somewhere. If God is speaking and you're not listening, you're not going to go anywhere. That's what I'm saying. And many people hear a noise or a sound, but have no distinction of what is being said. Say amen, somebody. And Christians today, they want to hear. I, I remember many times when I was younger, I said, Lord, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear it clearly. Right? Amen. My sheep shall hear my voice. And it was little by little by little I began to hear what the Spirit of God was beginning to say to me. So today we're going to look at the miracle of you and I being able to hear his voice. God is calling to the whole world, has been calling out. What would, what would he be saying, Pastor Kerry? Well, remember in the beginning, after Adam and Eve had committed high treason and they have eaten of the fruit that God says not to eat of? And then God came in the cool of the day what did he do? He called out, Adam, where are you? Now, folks, what we don't realize is when God did that, all of us were in Adam. And God still today is saying to the entire world, Adam, where are you? Are you eating still of that tree? of the knowledge of good and evil? Amen. And the people are answering, it was the woman you gave me, God. Always making excuses for sloppiness. No. Let Jesus step in there and be Lord. Now, think about it. How many here remember the day when, when they had TV and radio, huh? Now, what do we have, the internet? You know, you know, the World Wide Web and all that. But the point I want to try to make is there's a lot of signals going on all over the world. Satellite signals, radio signals, right? Now, are you tuned into all those different channels? Absolutely not. It's not until you have a device, Jenny, to tune into those individual stations where you can get the information you need but you got to pay attention to the programming. Now, God's been sending out signals in his voice ever since the beginning of creation. If you are really good and walk with God in a great way, you can still hear through the trees and the birds, God's voice still singing, saying, I'm here. Take me. Receive my son. Remember, remember back in the day when the prophet Eli was getting old and his eyes were abating and said there was no open vision in the land. Hope you know your Old Testament a little bit. And he had a servant named Samuel. Eli is what I said. Okay? All right? He had a little servant named Samuel. Do you remember the story? Samuel was asleep. Eli was about ready to die. There was no open vision in the land. And uh, God speaks to Samuel. Samuel? And we know the story. He, he gets up, runs to Eli, says, What do you, Master, have you called for me? And he says, I haven't called for you. Go back to sleep. How many times did he do it? it must have been like a Peter, huh? Three times. Last time, the prophet said, Hey, answer. 
body of Christ. Those of you who are coming into the garage, God is speaking. Answer. How many of you remember the day of the dial phones? The landlines? I mean, I still have a landline. Maybe you do too. And, you know, maybe you're out barbecuing. Maybe you're way down the end of the house and, and the phone rings. And you don't know whether to run to the phone because it's gonna, they're going to hang up by the time you get there. Thank God for some time the mobile phone now, but nevertheless. And then finally, you decide, well, it's rang and rang and rang and rang and rang. And finally, you get up and you start going over to it and you get ready to pick it up and boo. Aren't you glad God doesn't do that? Aren't you glad when he's talking to you, you're dialed in and listening. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. So God wants to instruct us. But we want to, we have this tendency of being so religious. Well, God's going to talk to me. I believe God's been talking to each one of us every day. And if you got up in the morning and saw him first, you wouldn't even wonder about it. But as you can see, we're in the conundrum as the body of Christ because we have not been doing what God has been asking us to do. And so we need to do it. All right, so let's look at this. Listen to Proverbs 1.5, okay? All right, Proverbs 1.5 says, A wise man will hear and increase learning. Proverbs 1, this is the one I want you to go to. Proverbs chapter 1, please. Verse 20 through 23. Oh, wait a minute. I need a little bit of water, too. I love you guys. Thank you for coming in to the garage. We appreciate you. Oh, I need to make an apologetic. I'm going to apologize. What are you going to say, Pastor? Well, last week I made a stumble, a Freudian slip. I said I'm important. Only God's important. But I, what I meant to say is, it's important. So I thought I'd throw that in there because when you're watching and everything, and all of a sudden I say, I'm important. It was a slip of the tongue. Sorry about that. All right, Proverbs chapter 1. You got it? All right, verse 20. Listen to what it says. Oh, man, this is exciting. Wisdom calls outside. She raises her voice in the open square. Let me just ask you, because I know you, you know. Who's wisdom here? God. Who's calling here? God. See? God's never stopped calling. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the cheap concourses in the malls, at the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long will you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And for you that mock God or scorners, delight in your scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Then he says, he gives us the answer. He says, turn at my rebuke. I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my, listen, make my words known unto you. So what we don't realize is God has never stopped talking. But times we are in tune, times other times we're not. Don't fault yourself or feel under condemnation. You need to analyze yourself and get God to adjust you. I don't care if you're old school or not. Old school is broken. Unless it's God's school, then it's not old school. It's right up to date. How many know that God's old, but he's right up to date? How many know the scriptures are old, but they're right up to date? See, that's the miracle of God being able to relate to us. Now, let's really get into this. Turn at my rebuke, then I will pour out my spirit. A couple of points I want to give you. Point one, God, who is wisdom, is like a woman that calls. How many know, guys, when the wives speak, you should be listening? You better be listening. 
Well, if you have a good marriage, you, you want to get involved in some of that. Amen? All right. So, so when God comes, the ultimate desire for God is that none would perish. Do you agree with that? God doesn't want anybody to perish. So these Christians that are all upset and they're speaking down about these goofballs that are doing all this stuff, God doesn't want them to perish either. But you and I need to get our acts together and hear God so that we shine and become the example to the wayfaring man. To the people that are caught up in all the things of the world and Satan's traps. The Christian church is to be an example and a gateway to God. Enter in here, you'll find Jesus. No. Sometimes we let people um, kind of irritate us and we never find Jesus. Why are we so bent on correcting everybody? I don't know. I wondered that myself. All right, the second point I want to make is, he says, turn at God's harsh rebuke. It's actually the word rebuke. There is harsh warning. How many here know that if somebody loves you and the bridge is out, they say, they give you a kind of a, a warning. And if you're really getting close to disaster, it kind of intensifies. God sees that the world's in a disaster and he gives it a harsh rebuke. Not that he hates the world, for God so loved the world, but he gives it a harsh, stern warning. Turn at my rebuke. Pay attention to my words. Everyone got that idea, I guess. And then thirdly, we should remember that the enemy's entire job in nature is to dull the believer's hearing and to blind the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel, which is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus says in John, he says, and it says the word was flesh, okay? And, and the light shineth into darkness, and the darkness cannot what? Overwhelm it or comprehend it. Folks, if you're in a camp and all the lights have been turned out and everybody wants to go to the restroom, you with the flashlight are going to be a hero. Right, Marvin? You with the flashlight are going to be a hero because everybody needs the light. Yeah. But what do we do? We cover the light and just become human again. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Let's move on. All right. Fallen on deaf ears. This is something that's concerned me ever since I've been a minister over 40 some odd years. Fallen on deaf ears. Matthew 13, please. This is really good. There's some real, Jesus is speaking here, there's some real wisdom coming out of him for the spiritual walk of a believer. Matthew 13, verse 13. Therefore I speak to them in parables. A parable is a story. We'll just keep it simple. Why did he speak to them in parables? Well, one of my funny answers is because they weren't very smart. <laughs> God had to relate to them. So when Jesus related to people, if you were a doctor, he related to you in doctorness. If you were a fisherman, he talked to you about fishing. If you were a farmer, he talked about farming. It isn't about you telling everybody how great you are. <laughs> You've got a witness Find what the person likes and then use it as a witness. Oh, good idea. <laughs> All right, you ready? Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing, they do not see. And hearing, they do not hear or listen. Nor do they understand. See, that's how Satan works. Can't see, can't hear, don't pay attention. You don't understand. And then somebody like that wants to give you advice. That's a real toughie. Think about that. Then it goes on, it says, 
And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and shall not perceive. For their hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Look at this next phrase. And their eyes they have shut. They purposely shut their eyes to truth. Now, folks, my pastor taught me years ago, and I taught for years, that if you shut down God reaching you with the truth, with the light, then all you're going to do is walk on in darkness. And if you like stumbling about, falling down, looking dummy and screwy bally, new words, then go ahead. But we're supposed to be a witness. If you're going to have dirty diapers, don't have them in front of everybody. Can I have an amen? amen. Come on, let's have another one. Amen. Christians, if you're going to mess up, try to do it privately. Actually, you're never by yourself anyway because you have God. All right, so listen. Hearing they will hear but not understand. For... For the, their hearts of this people have grown dull. Well, how? Sin. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, he's talking to his disciples, for they shall see, and your ears, for they shall hear. Now, one thing I want to tell you about me. Sometimes it, when I speak, it sounds like I'm talking right to you. That's the Holy Spirit, please. I've learned a long time ago in Christian Preaching 101, never preach at people. Preach up and let the, the word fall down on them. And then what they grasp, they're able to do. But listen, if the shoe doesn't fit... Don't stick it on. Hello? Learn to take the scripture when you study and when you are, 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 are moving with God in your private time with him to uh, personally apply it to yourself only. When God gives me my sermon, first it's a word to me. Do you get it, son? Have you gotten it now, son? Hello, son. Son, read that again. And I'm, I'm writing down sermon, you know. And then, you know, preachers, I'm talking about myself here. You go to a seminar and you don't even listen to what's preached. You're thinking about eight or nine different sermons you can get out of it. I think we need to start listening again. It's quiet in here. <laughs> I sure love you. All right, so a couple of points I want to give you. So he says, blessed are your eyes for they shall see and your ears for they shall hear. Point one, it is the fallen nature of man and often our stubbornness that we don't listen. It shuts down our receiving because we are on a wrong station. How many know today there's a different kind of state? Classic rock station, there's an oldie station. Then we have what we call an alternative station. And I remember my dad used to tell me, he built me a drum shed so I could play my drums and learn how to play my drums out in the shed, not in the house. He says, I love you, son, but your music, you know. And, you know, sometimes nowadays, I, I know I'm getting old because some of that music is terrible. But rather than being opinionated about it, we need to focus on the right station. Hello? You don't listen to music you don't like. Here's the problem, though. Christians today, especially in America, Canada, all the, the more freer nations, they're not bound by, like, you know, third world or, or communism or whatever that. They have the freedom to choice, don't they? Amen. Sure they do. Amen. So we can make a choice. God, what did God say? I've set before you life yes. and death. Therefore, 
I suggest to you, choose life. And so we have all these stations, but it's up to us to dial in. How about today? What has God said to you personally? He should have said something personally about your life today to encourage you, to build you up, to comfort you, to exhort you to change. Hello? We need to become accountable to him and maybe a sister if you're a sister, a brother if you're a brother, on checking in and making sure you're making progress in your walk. Because when we do, how many know that you have a refrigerator and that in your refrigerator, if you don't keep that food moving, it's going to grow things you don't really want. And that's what happens to us as believers. We begin to sit and not allow and make adjustments in ourselves, and we begin to grow moss, crust, get edgy. We begin to deny and hide things when everything is open before God. And besides, if you have a good pastor like you do, before me. <laughs> so thank God we love each other. Can you say amen? If not, say oh me. Second thing is, we know who's responsible for blinding and deafening humanity. Right? And he still is pounding on mankind over and over. Take a look at some of the news media. Take a look at some of these things that are going on in the world system. I'm not talking about God's system, world system. Do you notice it gets repeated and gets repeated and gets repeated and gets repeated and gets repeated? Why? Because the devil thinks that if he keeps hammering on us, we're going to bow towel tail. I have a little statement. There was a movie that came out later on, but my dad used to say this, never let the dog wag your tail. Never let the little things control your life. It's the little foxes, Jesus said, that destroy the vine. So what do we do? We go to God every day, and he works on the little foxes. And, oh, there's one now. Crush. <laughs> Can you say amen? But it's because we don't go to God about it. We don't talk openly to God about it. We sort of, you know, you know, God, help me. Come on. This is a war that's going on, folks. <laughs> All right. I think we got, so God is speaking. What has he said to you today? You know what he said to me today? He said, I have many great things to say, and if they would listen, I would move them up in another realm. He said that to me today. He says, Carrie, I love you. He says, I think the world loves you, son. I especially love it when you just tell me you love me. I heard him say that to me today. I, I'm sure he's saying that to you too. But we really got to train our listener. You got to get that receiver, that radio receiver, that godly heart receiver more tuned in because you've let all the static noise mess your minds. Now I'm talking to all of us, okay? Speak for yourself. I am speaking for myself. If I listen too long to the wrong stuff, it's going to affect my mood. I'm a little smarter than that. I watched somebody misunderstand somebody's comment and their whole day was ruined because they let it bother them. Wrong station. You're on the poor me station. All right, let's move right along. So, have you ever wondered why Jesus kept saying, them with the ears, let them hear? Same as today, we're listening to, if we're listening to the right station. But I think a lot of us hear a lot of noise. Go with me to Mark chapter 4, please. Look at verse 23 through 25. I love this passage of Scripture because it talks about listening. Mark 4, 23 through 25. All right, bless your heart. He you should, he, okay, all right. So here's what it says, verse 23. If anyone has ears to hear, 
what everybody? Let them hear. Does anybody have ears to hear? Everybody? Let them hear. Smile at the person that seems not to be listening, is already thinking about their stomach after church. Now, I'm not referring to you, but you see how distracting this system Satan has set up. That's why it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For anyone love the world, the love of the Father is not motivating, is not in them. For all that is of the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh is not of God, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. Well, Pastor Kerry, does that mean I'm not supposed to enjoy fishing? No, I'm going fishing. Does that mean I'm not supposed to enjoy my family? No, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about don't make all your investments in a system that Satan has set up. Because that's designed to draw you away from God. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away from God and enticed. So Satan keeps hammering this false narrative, these words, over and over again. And he has the mindless repeating it. I'm going to say it. He repeats it. He repeats it. But the mindless keep on repeating it too. Who do you mean mindless? I'm not referring to you. Don't repeat the obvious, especially if the enemy wants attention. Okay, moving right along. So if anyone has ears to let me hear, 24 says, and he said to them, listen, take heed, pay attention to what you hear. Who's speaking here? Jesus, with the same measure you listen, it will be measured to you. And you who hear, more will be what? Folks, I told you earlier that the ones that are going somewhere with God are the ones that pay attention, that are not easily distracted. Now, I'm not talking about you. How could I be? I'm talking about me. I, I asked the Lord, how distracted have I been? What's playing on my emotions? See, this is the way you need to analyze yourself with God. And I'm so amazed because most Christian churches, because unless they get into a private class or something, never relate to Christians this way about their personal walk on a daily basis that they need to work it out with God, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right? So take heed what you hear and with the measure that you listen, for it will be measured back to you. For whoever has listening the ability to hear, to him more will be given. But whoever does not listen, does not want to hear, even what he seems to have will be taken away from him. Who's the thief in the Bible? If you're not listening, he's ripping you off. Well, I don't see him doing it. How about your emotions? How come you're not such a happy guy, a happy girl anymore? Ripping you off. Basing your emotions on things, maybe. Not on God. You see, God never changes, right? So whether it looks good or smells bad or whatever it is, you're the same. Why? Because you are magnificently blessed in God. We focus on him for those reasons. You're disciples, folks, too. You're not only a child of God, but you're a student. As students, you need to learn the way it is. Learn how God wants you to make those steps and let him help you. If we don't even cover that, then you're just being religious. We don't want that. Amen. Everyone say, I'm not religious. I'm not religious. I, know I know him. Amen. Having trouble with these? Okay. All right. So don't miss me. I'm not preaching anything weird. <laughs> just go back over and watch it. Okay. All right. You know, in Luke... The 8th chapter, it says it a little different. 
it says, take heed what you hear here. But in Luke, it says, take heed how you hear. Same passage, take heed how you hear. So it's what you hear and how you hear. Everyone say, what I hear and how I hear. What I hear, how I hear. God speaking, what is it? What I hear and how I hear. Satan's talking. You're not listening. Yay. Proverbs 120, 133 says this. If you continue to read Proverbs chapter 1, you'll find out that, that if you don't listen to God, he'll laugh when you fall down. You know, this is Old Testament, so he doesn't do that now, but he, he mocks at people that mock him. These people that says they're no God, he just laughs. Says, sure, the only thing they can make is a mess. Have one of those professors in all these expensive school make a flower. I tell you, what they're doing is making messes right now, teaching you how to hate this country. Get away from that. Amen. Look at Proverbs 133. Listen to this. This is you. I'm talking to you. Say, this is me. Listen, this is a beautiful promise to us, and this is our reality. Proverbs 133, but whoever listens to me, put your hands up, say, that's me. Whoever listens to me will dwell safely and be quiet and secure without fear of evil. Oh, let's pause for a minute. That is so good, so rich. You have to be a listener to God. You have to hear what he's saying. A person that begets the use to their shepherd can recognize God everywhere because the good of God comes out. You said the people today are so busy looking at what's wrong, they miss what's right. I'm going to say that again. That's rich. We're so busy looking at what's wrong and talking about ourselves, we miss what is right. And our, 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 our receiver turns away from that station and suddenly we're on our self station. We're on some alien station. <laughs> Come on now, I'm talking to all of us. And so we as mature Christians... Uh, people that have been saved a while should have this down. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and, and look at this. I love this. Mark 4, verse 20. Go up a little bit from Mark 4 where you're at. It said, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Everyone say good ground. Good ground. These are the ones on good, on good ground. Now look what it says. Those that hear the word. Those that hear what God is saying through word. Now, here's one way my Bible college professors taught me. You know, I, I did most of my teaching and stuff, you know, what we call on-the-job training. But I took a, a myriad of classes about who is God and all that too. But my, one of the things that, that is a very important, okay, that we need to understand is it takes a while to walk with God for us to be sensitive to a God and how he is, his character, his nature, right? How many here, when you accepted Jesus, I mean, you were totally accepted, totally healed, totally redeemed. There's no debts and everything, but it took a while for you to develop an understanding. And when we still are, if we really are honest about it, we're still understanding things about God, which is great. God loves that. But it takes you and I walking with him in a serious way every day. I'm not talking about getting robes and sandals. I'm talking about walking with God, guarding our heart, making sure that we're listening to what the shepherd is saying to us. Psalms 23, first scripture, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen. Amen. He that listens to me shall dwell safely 
and be quiet or secure from the fear of evil. COVID. Who knows what other weird things are going to come up in these end times. But you and I are in Christ. All right, let's move along. All right, God's sheep hear his voice. God's sheep hear his voice. Go with me to John chapter 10. There's so much meat in this particular scripture. How many here know the devil wasn't born in this planet? The devil was created being, right? What's the difference between you and Adam? Adam was created, but you and I were born. You have a belly button, Adam did not. You say, what's that have to do really? I'm trying to get you to focus in on what I'm saying here. God's purpose and plan for Adam, you and I in Adam, is for us to walk with God and enjoy all of his creation for the rest of eternity. Someone say amen. amen. And don't let hell or fire or this world keep you from that very plan of God for your life. Don't you protect the things that you love? Children. Job, home, right? So my sheep hear my voice, and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. Folks, the world's voice is a strange voice. I'm going to say it again. The world has a strange voice. It's not God's voice. It's a world system voice comes right out of satanicness. Babylonianism. It's been going on ever since the fall of man and before. Whether you know it or not, but God put Lucifer in charge of this planet for him before the creation of man. And then when God put man and created man, Lucifer was already a fallen being. So what happened to him? And now in his fallen state goes right on into the garden and corrupts mankind and takes the world back into his authority, but a fallen authority. You say, well, how does this relate? Because now you need to know that Jesus had to come be born as a man in order to have any say here. Satan wasn't born here. He legally has no say here. But Adam gave him his authority. So Satan now thinks he's big boss because Adam gave him that authority. But it says a greater than he came and bound up that strong man and is now spoiling his goods. And you are those goods that he's spoiling. Will you be listening to the instruction when the SWAT team says it's time for you to leave? Or will you be ignoring it all bound up in fear? Man, the church is getting ready. Can't you feel it? She is preparing herself as a bride. Can't you sense there's a quickening happening? Why are you still frumping around in your old ways? So listen, most assuredly I say to you, he does not enter into the sheepfold, but by the, boor, by the door, but climbs up some other way. The same is what? A thief and a robber. Who's the thief and the robber? He climbed up another way, didn't he? He stole his authority from Adam, didn't he? All right, hope you're smart enough to catch this. So Jesus now had to come as a man Amen. without sin, yet in the likeness of sin, so that he can take our sin. Amen. But if he didn't come as a man and he came as God, he would be disqualified because this is now Satan's planet. So when he came in by the door, the first door there is being born in this planet naturally. Amen. A virgin birth. And immediately Satan knew the speck of dust in the bed of the oyster is going to make a pearl of great price. 
And it says, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Don't tell me as a Christian you can't hear God clearly. If not, you need to come and let's give you some training. We have, I have specific classes. They'll teach you how to hear God's voice. Been teaching them for years and years and years. Oh, no. Sometimes we, you know, Christians, we, sometimes we get in that place where we have itchy ears. I don't want to learn about love today. I don't want to learn about sin today. So we chase teachers that are only going to tell us what we want to hear. What did Paul write to Timothy? That there would come a day when people will have itchy ears, not listening to what they need to hear, but instead picking out what they want to hear. Now the world is the same way. That's a trick of the devil to get people to, to become indifferent, to become divided. He has an alternative, and God has the right thing. Amen. All right? My sheep shall hear my voice, and a voice of a stranger they will not follow. And it says, when he goes before them, he brings them out. Okay? And the sheep follow him. The sheep follow. See, I always kind of miss that part. The sheep follow him. Yeah. We're not goats. We're sheep. Goats aren't bad, but they don't follow very good. Don't be a goat and become a sheep and follow God. That was funny, <laughs> but it's the truth. All right. And they shall follow him, for they do not know the voice of stranger. Verse 5, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. The world is a stranger. Love not the world. Jesus says, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but fear not, little flock. I have overcome the world. Are you in Christ? Then you have overcome the world. Jesus used this illustration but they did not understand what he was referring to. Point one, the door is natural birth and the door to being born again is Christ. Amen. The doorkeeper is the Holy Spirit. Amen. But which station are we tuned into? A couple of points I want to give you. Number one, okay, we have a spiritual birth that comes through Christ and Christ only. People say, well, I believe there are many ways to heaven. Well, Jesus says, you have to go through me even to get a number. To even get God's attention, you've got to honor Christ. Amen. So we have a whole bunch of religions honoring Buddha, Buddha, Lada, Bing, Bada, Bing, Boom, Boom, and Jesus. Sort of hoping to get in. Remember the woman in Acts chapter 16? She says, hear ye, hear these men preach a way of salvation. Not the way of salvation. She says, my way, their way, everybody's way. Let's all be happy. Let's all gather together. How many know that's a deception of the enemy? We have to go through Jesus Christ. Even to get God's attention. Now, he knows we're here, but in order to get an audience in a serious manner, it says we have to, in that day, you have to go through Christ, go through me. All right. Second point is to hear is the beginning of listening. You got to first hear the call, and then you got to start listening. And then when you start listening, be careful that Satan doesn't switch the station on you. He's very crafty at it. About the time you don't think, one day you'll able to wake up in your bed and he's be sitting right there. Well, one of his imps, because we're not that important for the devil to show up. And that thing will be sitting right there. And, you'll, and the way you answer that thing, oh, it's just you roll over and go back to sleep. Or look at that thing and, uh, folks, there are evil spirits and they're, godly angels involved in your life. Yeah. Which one are winning? 
What station are you tuned into? Amen. It's a good, good thought. Thirdly, the world is the stranger. That strange voice. It kind of, kind of molests our thinking. It molests our mind. Gets us in arguments. We want to tell them a thing or two. We get all riled up. We end up switching off that station. Even though what they're saying is good. Because if you're not careful and you're listening to the wrong station, it will divide your heart. And you don't want a divided heart. Say, oh me. The world is a strange voice. Amen? We will not follow the voice of strangers. Say amen. amen. Folks, I got a good one for you. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. You're in the world, but not of the world. Let me read a couple of more scriptures and we'll done, okay? Boy, I love sharing this with you. So who are the ones in Christianity that go places? The ones that are listening to God. How often shall we listen? No, let's say it better. How often shall we listen? Starting every day, first thing. Okay, if we're going to be noted for anything here at this particular fellowship is that we put God first. What is the name of this fellowship? CCM, which stands for Christ-Centered Ministries. Everything we do, everything we say, hopefully, is centered around God's Christ so that we can center in and score high with God's. Can you say amen? And you say, Why do, how did you come up with that thing, Pastor Kerry? I didn't. God gave me a, a dream and a vision and named the church for me. That's why when I was going through struggles, wondering if God wanted me involved, he says, God spoke up and he said, I would have never told you to name it this if I was going to tell you to stop. Sometimes we're always second guessing God. Yeah, there was a time when I went through all of this. I wondered if God was done with me. Could you imagine how stupid that is? How do we know when the last moment is that God is done with us? When your last breath. He's not done with you until your last breath. He never gets rid of you. That's how dumb our thinking can be at some times. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says, My son, pay attention to my words. Incline, listen your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those, now look at this, who find them. You got to look for the treasures in the word, which takes you, takes for you to be serious and not a Bible whip whisperer. You know, it's just not frivolous. You get your Bible open. I would like to see your Bible so marked up and so into God. And then when you close it, you can quote more than one scripture. What does that prove, Pastor Kerry? It proves at least you're in the Word. <laughs> Amen. All right? And it says... Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all your flesh. You want to get healthy? You want to get thinner? and You want to get healthier? And you want to get more prosperous? It's the Word. Amen. Give attention to God's Word. Keep them before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. God said to Joshua the same thing in Joshua 1.8. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says, Therefore, whoever hears my sayings and does them, I will show you to whom they are like. They're like a wise man. Everyone say, wise man. Amen. Say, I'm a wise man because I do the word. I listen and do. I listen and do. And why do we miss such simplicity? You don't get up in the morning and forget how to walk. 
You know how to walk. Maybe walking might be a difficult thing, but you know how to walk. Many Christians today know what is needed, but they never bothered to try. And people promise me a lot of stuff. I never go on a promise. Only God's. Say, don't tell me you're going to do something. Do it. Make sure, though, you're, <laughs> it's the right thing. All right, let's continue on. Scripture says, I will hide the word in my heart that I might not sin against him. Matthew, uh, uh, excuse me, John 5, 24 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but be passed from death to life. Amen. Romans 10, 17, so, so then faith comes by? Hearing. Faith comes by? Hearing. Faith comes by? So what are you supposed to be doing every day? And listening to who? God. God. The world? Your, your cruddy radio stations? I'm amazed. Too. One time God showed me something. I was singing along to a Christian song, and the Christian song had a nice beat to it, but the words were so full of unbelief. So when you're singing along with something, make sure it's not saying, and God will have mercy on me when he wants. And I hope that my life will turn out. <laughs> you see, we do things like that. We're not interjecting our thinking. All right. So anyway, I've hammed up enough. I can get in trouble that way. Finally, Proverbs 7.24. This is a blessing to you. Now, therefore, listen to me, he says. My children, listen to me, my children. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Well, if you got something out of that this morning, those of you, I appreciate it. Remember, the listeners go somewhere. And as good as you listen to God, let's increase it. Sheep hear his voice, and he will increase your life and richness of your life in him. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Way on.